Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be teaching you to use the Warp Stabilizer effect in Adobe Premiere. Um, Warp Stabilizer used to be an effect that was only in After Effects, but it has since been ported to Adobe Premiere along with a bunch of other effects. And this is so that people that are experts in Premiere can actually expand into a little bit of visual correction and stuff like that without having to learn the new program um, Adobe After Effects. Warp Stabilizer is a great drag and drop effect that will really stabilize footage and make it look like it was shot on something like a Steadicam or a Dolly when it was handheld. Now, it can't, it's not a miracle worker. If something is really, really shaky, or later on I'll show you um, when something is motion blur shaky, it cannot fix that. But it is still a very powerful tool and it can fix a lot of footage. The first thing you want to do is you want to create a new composition, um, a new sequence, and drag your footage onto there. And then when you're using Warp Stabilizer, you want to make sure to cut off the ends that aren't being stabilized, that don't need stabilization. And the reason for this is that when Stabilizer works, if it tries to go over something like this right here, um, there's too much shaking and there's buckling in the film itself, the background changes too much, and Warp Stabilizer is going to work way harder than it should, and it's going to create a really, really sharp zoom to try to correct for all of that stuff. So make sure that you cut down your footage. So for example, I want to start here without that beginning sort of start the camera, and then there's an end camera sort of right here. So I want to bring that back to right about here. Then I'm going to drag it on back. And so now we have our footage to be stabilized. So let's go ahead and find Warp Stabilize. We go into the Effects panel and we go in search Warp Stabilizer. You can also, without searching anything, just go to Video Effects, Distort, and then it is down here as Warp Stabilizer. You then take it and either you drag it onto the footage you want to be stabilized or you can drag it up here into the Effects Controls pane. We're just gonna drag it right here and as you can see, Warp Stabilizer has been applied and it's going to now analyze the background, which is a frame by frame process. So if the footage is longer or your computer is slower, it will take longer amounts of time to do this step. So understand that if you're putting in a really long piece of footage. While it's doing that, let's go look at another sequence. And this is what I was talking about, how Warp Stabilizer can't save everything. This was a shot where I was walking, and if it was during the day, it probably would have stabilized really well. But the reason it didn't is because it's at night, which means there's low exposure and my camera has to shoot on a slow setting, which means that the shutter speed is really slow. So that creates this, where it's stable, but every time I take a step, it shook the footage, and it motion shook the footage as well where if it was daytime, it would be an extremely sort of fast um, shutter speed to it. So when I took a step, it would shake things without blurring them, which Warp Stabilizer can actually fix. But because it's blurred, no matter what I do to this footage, it's always going to look bad. And so whenever you're using Warp Stabilizer, make sure you go ahead and understand that when you're shooting the footage, you're going to want to shoot as fast as possible. So if you think you might have to warp stabilize something, if you're holding the camera and you're like, we'll just warp stabilize it later, make sure that you shoot at a fast setting and don't include really fast motions that are going to cause motion blur. Going back on over to here, our footage has now been um, analyzed and it has been stabilized. So before we had this, which shaking, it's a little bit nauseating as it goes up. You can totally see that it's my hand bringing it up. With warp stabilizer though, you have almost this pan shot going up and it is not a perfect pan going up. It, it, it looks close to a dolly, like maybe a, a crane going up and looking down, but it isn't. <laughs> However, this is a perfectly usable shot that I would use in really anything without needing um, a dolly or a really expensive crane. So if you're on a low budget, this is a great thing to do maybe with um, a tripod or with um, a selfie stick if you're using a GoPro to pan something up like this and then correct through warp stabilization. Through the warp stabilization, you'll notice that my footage has been zoomed in just a little bit and it has been rotated just slightly. And that is because we are using um, the auto scale, the subspace warp, all of these settings. And basically what it does is this is a stabilize without doing anything. 
So as you can see, it's shaking all around because what it's doing is it's moving the footage in relationship to how the footage is moving. Um, so if the footage moves left, it takes it and it pushes it right. So that that so if we were tracking one pixel, it's going to try to keep that pixel as centered as possible where it started. But it, it's also extremely, you know, advanced algorithm. So it's going to see the motion of where that pixel should be next. And it's going to adjust accordingly. So then it creates a really cool stabilized effect. And if you see, with only stabilized, we have this black on the edges. So when we go to stabilize and crop, now it crops all of that away. So it's just one piece of footage. You're not seeing movement anymore. And then we go down into the auto scale, which is going to scale it in for us so we don't even see the black. Understand that the more stable that you want to do it, the more zoom and auto scale that it's going to create. So if you want a footage, you know, like up to, this goes, this is also on the law of diminishing returns here. 268% is not, you know, a ton better than 210% or 180%. Um, and really it starts to get looking a little unreal here. It looks too stable coming up now because we know that it isn't a dolly shot. It's adjusting too much. And so it almost looks like I'm moving and the dolly isn't, which is weird because I'm standing, or it looks like the whole earth is moving and the dolly isn't, which is even weirder. So understanding that more is not better. And also we scaled up to 123% here. And anything past really 115% you wanna start looking out for. Um, past 125%, it's probably gonna be unusable at that point. It's gonna just be way too grainy when you blow it up to what its original resolution should be. A way to get around this, however, is if you shoot in a really high resolution. So for example, if I shot in 4K, then I could auto scale that to 200% and it would still look fine as long as I rendered it out in something like 2.7K or 1080p. You have to render it in a lower resolution. And that's because 4K has so much information that when we zoom in, the program isn't guessing the new pixels. The, the pixels are all already there. So you can keep zooming in until it needs to start guessing pixels. And that is a really far distance um, between, for example, 4K and 1080p. So if you have some footage that stabilizes it and zooms in a little bit too much, think about rendering out at a lower resolution. It could still be HD, but it'll give you that extra boost where you don't have the problem of lost resolution when trying to play it back at such a high resolution. The, so we're just going to go ahead and set this back down to 50%. Um, if you want to lower it, you think it zoomed in too much, you can do that too. So actually, let's go down to 12% here. And you'll see it goes down to 107.6%. But noticeably, it's going to be just a little bit more shaky. It's going to go in a little bit more. It's going to have a little bit more rotation to it. And that's just the nature of the beast. Lower, um, lower smoothness equals basically less crop, more shake. More smoothness is more crop, less shake. Um, there's actually a slider down here in advanced between crop less and smooth more that really kind of illustrates what I'm doing here. You have to give up one for the other. So yeah, that's what the, um, the last one is stabilize and synthesize edges. I can click it, but it takes so long. So it's gonna do the stabilization process and then it's a little bit intensive to actually go and replicate every single edge. So we're gonna go frame by frame here. And you can kind of see, you get this, this um, what would I call this? It's almost like a VHS player down here. See how it's like rippling everything? And so if you had something that was really plain, that was, for example, maybe a forest, because trees are kind of easily replicated in that sense. They're very symmetrical being part of nature. Then the edges could be repeated. But in something like this, where there are people, where there's lots of movement, really complex objects and a complex foreground and background, synthesized edges is going to be pretty bad because it's going to create a very weird sort of um, effect around the edges that you just don't want. So I usually keep it here at auto scale, and I usually keep it right around 50%, give or take 20% on that. A lot of times, if you get your footage set up just right, you can just go ahead and drag and drop this on here, and it'll look good every single time. So that basically does it for Warp Stabilizer. There is an advanced tab down here, but that is kind of advanced and out of the scope of this tutorial. Um, you should be able to just use these effects to get what you want. 
if however you need to do a little bit of adjustments there's some really good um, resources online that you can look into this stuff and really the best way to learn is just to turn some of this stuff on um, and just start clicking around with it for example detailed analysis is going to take longer to analyze your background but you might have just a little bit more control over it in the end so thanks for watching this video on warp stabilizer if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and i'll go ahead and answer those for you and if you want, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be posting Adobe related videos and tutorials all the time. So it's a great way to broaden your skills, um, learn something that you haven't learned. And yeah, so until next time, guys, see ya.